Hello, and welcome back to our Motion tutorial series. Today, we'll explore how Motion's view engine helps you stay organized, collaborate effectively, and generate powerful reports for your team. Section 1. Understanding Motion's three levels of organization. Let's talk about Motion's three levels of organization. One, you have workspaces at the top. This is where similar projects live. For example, you might have a workspace for your marketing team and one workspace for your product development. Two, you have projects. Projects sit within workspace and represent the work that needs to be delivered. Three, within projects, you have tasks. These are the individual work items that need to be scheduled and completed to move a project forward. Tasks can exist within projects or directly within workspaces for tasks that don't belong to a project. Four, events. These are meetings or appointments. They can exist privately on your calendar or soon they'll also exist as part of projects and workflow time. To recap, we have workspaces, projects, tasks, and events. Section two, motions, view types. Now let's look at the four different view types that Motion offers to display your data. First, list view. This is your traditional rows and columns view. You can display tasks or projects as rows and their properties like deadline priority as columns. What makes Motion's list view powerful is the ability to group and stack data by any of its properties, much like an Excel pivot table. You can also take bulk actions on tasks, making management quick and efficient. List views are useful to create timesheets or to quickly scope out a large project as you can easily and very quickly enter tasks. By default, all tasks organized as a list view and any workspace view is also organized in the list format by default. Two, Kanban view. This shows your tasks or projects as cards. Views are great for moving tasks between categories. For example, you might have a view that groups your tasks by week or one that organizes tasks by their status, which is great for scrum meetings, which honestly, now that you have motion, you won't need to hold any. You can even group projects by stage to create a project tracker view, perfect for monitoring progress. Three, Gantt view. The Gantt chart shows your projects visually on a timeline. Like all motion views, you can group your data by different properties like project status or stage. My personal favorite is to group this view by assignee so I can see when someone's out of office or fully booked for the week. Four, team schedule view. This is one of my favorite views. This is a calendar view where rows represent people and columns represent days. The team schedule view aggregates scheduled hours for each person so you can see if your team is overbooked or under capacity. Section three, customizing and saving views. Views and reports allow you to visualize data in the way that works best for you. Here's how. Views can be customized to show exactly what you need. You can rearrange, hide, or show columns by just clicking and dragging, or through this plus control where you can rearrange in any order you want or turn columns on and off. You can also set up filters, which are very, very powerful. For example, you can filter your projects or your tasks. Let me show you a few of the filters that are available. In here, you can filter by assigning like I can set as equals me or Carlos, for example. I can also set a completed on, for example, tasks that were completed in the last seven days. I can also say, show me all tasks that are auto scheduled on, auto scheduled off, and I have a plethora of other filters. For example, created by, created on, deadline, labels, priority, whether a task is recurring or not, what date it's scheduled on, stages, statuses, when the task was updated, and of course, I can do filters by any of my custom fields. Tasks can also be bulk edited, and it's very easy to do. Just select the task you want to edit, and select the edits you want to do, and click save. Let's take a look here. If I want to select these two tasks, I can select them like this, and you can see here that I can change their priorities to high, their durations to 30 minutes, and when I click save, both of them get updated. I can also quickly select by clicking on the header, and it selects all the tasks within that group. I can unselect all, and I can also select the main header to select all the tasks in the group. You can also save your views for easy access. You can create personal views for yourself or team views that anybody else can see. This ensures that everyone's looking at the same data in the same way, creating consistency across your team. So let's take a look at an example. I have here my list view grouped by workspace project and task, but if instead of workspace project and task, I want to do project and then assign me, you can set that up and you'll see that the save button appears here. Once I click save, I can save it as a project view. I'm going to save it to personal, but I could also save it to team view if I wanted to. So as I click save, you will see that the view controller changes here and I can see all my personal views and my team views. Let's take a look at a couple of buttons at the top that make things even easier. Let's click on only show scheduled past deadline. This allows me to see with one click all tasks that have been scheduled past their deadline so I can quickly go and resolve them. I can also with one click show completed tasks. This will show me all the completed tasks as well if I want to build some sort of report for them. In workspace and team views, completed tasks are hidden by default for a cleaner interface, or you can show them again with a single click as needed. Section four, let's create some useful reports. All right, now let's put all this knowledge that we've accumulated into practice by creating a few common and useful reports. First, let's create a weekly timesheet. A weekly timesheet should probably be a list view. So I'm gonna stay here in the all tasks view and I'm gonna set my group back control to be assignee and I'm gonna remove project. I'm gonna add a nested row for completed on by week. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. There's a few things that I need to fix, right? I need to show completed tasks. And I'm gonna set up a filter to only show completed tasks. 
All right, let's close out the filters and now let's set up our columns. What do we actually want to know about this task? I just wanna know what the completed time is. So I'm gonna go here and turn everything off except completed duration. All right, now I have set this report up. I'm gonna collapse all. I'm gonna look at Jessica. And I see that the week of September 9th through the 15th, let's open this up. She did 25 tasks for a total of 12 hours and 30 minutes of tasks. If I look at myself, I can see that I have two weeks in here. September 9th through the 15th, I completed 10 hours and 30 minutes of tasks. And September 16th through the 22nd, which is the current week, I completed 13 hours and 50 minutes of tasks. Let's go ahead and save this view as weekly timesheet and make it a team view so anybody in the team can see it. If I click on my views control, I can now see that the weekly timesheet is right here. Now let's create a view by all projects this quarter. This view is better seen as a Gantt chart. So I'm gonna go here and change this all task view from list to Gantt. That's all I have to do, same exact information. I'm gonna set a filter for projects that are due between October 1st and December 31st. Deadline, date range, October 1st through December 31st. Click apply. I'm gonna group them by assignee. Change this to assignee. So now I can see all my projects this quarter. You can see after December, there's no projects here. All right, let's save this view. as all projects this quarter as a team view. Lastly, I wanna see my projects by stage. If you wanna track how all your projects are going throughout your company, through the various stages, you can do so by clicking on Kanban. Let's make sure that we're looking at data of project and let's group these projects by stage. Very, very easily, I can see that there's three projects right now in the client onboarding stage, three in strategy development, five in content creation, campaign execution. So this gives me an overall view of what my team is up to. I can go ahead and save this view as projects group by stage and make it a team. Now, if I open my view control here, I can see that I have all these views that are available to anyone on my team. So that way they can easily see the same information that I can see. Lastly, I wanna show you the team schedule view. In team schedule, you will be able to see rows for every single employee in the company and columns for each day of the week. You can see the motion automatically adds up all the hours that you have for tasks for that week for that person. Furthermore, Motion shows you in each cell how many hours each person is working each day. By customizing and saving views, you'll always have access to the exact data you need, when you need it. Whether it's tracking team capacity, creating reports, staying on top of deadlines, Motion gives you the flexibility to tailor your workflow and maximize efficiency. And with our innovative view engine, you can create views and reports in any way that you see fit for your team. However, because Motion is very opinionated about what a workspace, project, task, and event is, you can rest assured that your data is always good and it's always organized. Thanks for watching. Happy scheduling. Bye-bye.